comprehensive civil consultancy private limited he has 18 years experience in structural and civil engineering he specializes in the design of water supply hydro power projects residential commercial and industrial projects for domestic and overseas infrastructure clients most importantly he has a wide command on software proficiency like stad etaps sap safe tets and impact recognition on design codes of is ps aci utc australia and new zealand code mr anil mahadik has unique way of practice by training the student practically such that the students will be industrial ready welcome you sir thank you over to you sir anil sir thank you dandin sir uh, thanks for uh, my introduction uh, what is value engineering uh, well actually we may be aware that value engineering is mostly used in the manufacturing industry for the product design and uh, actually less part is used in the construction industry uh, as far as india is concerned in other countries like usa and other countries value engineering is also used for the construction and design also in india it is also there but it is in little uh, in little way so value engineering uh, what is meant by value, en- value engineering it is a methodology which tries to reduce the cost of a project or a product it also tries to complete the project within less time and uh, value engineering also tries to improve the value of a project or a product with lesser com- consumption of the resources or through creative ideas and decisions so i'll uh, explain you with a small example what is meant by value engineering uh, now as everybody are i think civil engineers uh, everybody knows that in industry Uh, generally the client any project requires drawings to be prepared now let's say an example that a client is requiring 100 drawings to be prepared for a project and now he wants the drawings to be prepared by any consulting uh, agency or consulting consultancy so let's say he floats an inquiry so there may be there are different cases in the industry so uh, i just jotted down three cases where the drawings can be prepared but what is the what is the difference between three let's say there are three cases case one is say a consultant or consulting agency is preparing the drawings by hand drawings uh, on the tracing so this is one classical method then one consulting agency is doing the drawings by autocad drafting and let's say third uh, consulting agency is doing the drawings by revit 3d model and then uh, 2d drawing preparation after the extraction of those 3d model if we see the comparison of different parameters uh, i have put down some parameters to compare let's say uh, time to complete the 100 drawings definitely if we do the drawings by hand it will definitely take more time so it let's say it takes 3 months for uh, case 1 let's say for case 2 autocad drafting it takes 2 months as we know that software can do the things very fast and we can reuse lot of things in that so autocad drafting we will finish the drawings within 2 months and let's say revit model and drawings it will finish within 1 month as we know that once we do the model in revit the drawing extractions are very easy and it saves the time now as far as the cost of the drawings is concerned to the client then let's say hand drawings definitely it will take uh, more cost as the time required and resources required will be more for this so let's say it is a 3 lakhs definitely autocad drafting will uh, consume less amount say let's say 2 lakhs and 3d model revit is 1 lakh so quality of drawings if we concern then hand drawings will be let little less con- uh, quality because uh, the quality drawn by the hand is less autocad drafting definitely it is good quality and for revit 3d model definitely still more quality as far as the value addition is concerned hand drawing is a classical and old method so it should it will not add much value even though it will solve the purpose autocad drafting definitely we can draw the color drawings also nowadays so architects or any structural uh, engineers may require color drawings also which will add the value to that drawings then in revit 3d model also can be given to a client most of the time clients are not uh, uh, rather 
educated in the technical perspective so they understand 3d drawings better than the uh, 2d drawings so that is the value addition to the client and for the standard use of future projects definitely hand drawings cannot be reused again because they need to be prepared again and again for auto drafting generally 50% utilization reuse is possible revit model definitely it will reuse more also than that as far as the initial time for preparation is concerned hand drawings will take uh, more time for autocad drafting it will take less time for revit model generally actually initial time is more uh, but uh, at the end the time uh, gets saved but initially it is less as far as the initial cost for this uh, system is concerned definitely hand drawings uh, we only need the resources uh, say drafting or engineering resource so initial cost may not be too much but uh, for autocad autocad software needs to be purchased which will cost say 1 lakh rupees and for revit it is still more so if you compare these three cases you will find that even though it seems that revit is having initial cost more and initial uh, drafting time more but at the end it is uh, giving the drawings within less time and within less cost so this is a small example to understand the value engineering concept now we will go little more ahead uh, what is meant by value so value is nothing but function upon cost value we can say it is a worth to the customer function means properties or quality or use of product that is called as a function and cost uh, we know that money value of materials or labors or indirect cost required to prepare that uh, product or say project uh, we can understand from here that uh, how the value increases let's say there is a functional value if the functional value increases and cost decreases definitely value will increase uh, you can see from this equation also uh, that in the denominator cost is there so when the cost is less value will increase now similarly if the functional value is increasing more but cost is also increasing but less still the value is increasing getting so in this case also even though little cost is increasing still the value will increase because compared with the cost the functional value is increasing more now in the third case let's say the functional value is decreasing little but cost is decreasing a lot still that we can say that a functional value is uh, that value is increasing and last case is that functional value decreasing and cost is increasing in that case we can say that yes value is decreasing in this case so this kind of fourth proposal is generally rejected in the value engineering concept the first three concepts can be used in the value engineering decisions now what is value engineering approach actually there is no standard method but yes there are different methods developed i'll discuss one of the methods out of this as as we know that value is a subjective and creative process so we cannot exactly standardize the method but definitely we can achieve the value for the project so actually brain, brainstorming sessions are created here uh, within the team and all team members and stakeholders give their uh, inputs uh, regarding the ideas uh, which will increase the value and reduce the cost and it can be applied to many or one or many times as per the functional requirement and client's requirement so as we know that planning and organizing has to be ha happen at the beginning of, of the project similarly value engineering approach shall be started at the beginning of the project within the planning phase only then and then we can get the most benefit of it so if we apply this at the later stages let's say we are applying at construction phase then the uh, margin or whatever benefits we are getting it will be less at the end but definitely if we start at the planning phase it will give more so any project lies within this uh, zone so any projects we know that it requires a land uh, generally client is having a land with him then if you want to start any project first we do the contour survey which is done by the civil engineers then geotechnical investigation where we uh, check the soil bearing capacity and foundation uh, suggestions and recommendation generally it is done by the geotechnical engineer then architects are appointed who is doing the architectural planning for that project then there is a structural consultant and structural engineering team 
who is doing this uh, structural general arrangement drawings then they do the analysis and design of the structure then after that there are MEP consultants. MEP means mechanical, electrical, and plumbing consultant. There may be some other vendors also apart from these agencies. Uh, as per the requirement of a client, let's say in manufacturing industry, there may be some different uh, vendors uh, with re respect to say it is automobile industry. Then there is car car manufacturing, there are car erection methods, and some other vendors. Then there is a contractor who is doing the construction of that project where the contracting and site engineering team is there and after the construction is done the project project is handed over to the client and he takes care of the maintenance of that project then over the years structural audit and retrofitting of that project is done and after so many years like 100 years 80 years the project is demolished and once again the project is started so just to understand what is the project uh, this is a life cycle of project uh, now we will go ahead with this. Uh, as I just previously said that value engineering is effective at the beginning of the project. Let's say client has appointed architects and structural consultant in the beginning and all other consultants. And if they try to do this value engineering, then definitely at the planning phase, we can get more benefits. So there is more saving possibility in the beginning of the project, in the planning phase. As we go ahead, we can see from this graph, that saving possibility is getting decreased like this. So if you see here at the construction zone, there is a very less possibility of saving the cost. And once we go ahead, then almost we lose the possibility of value engineering. So it is loss. Loss means we can say possibility of redu reducing the cost or increasing the value. So we can say value engineering shall be applied at the beginning of the project. Now, briefly, this value engineering methodology has been jotted down. There is no standard method, but yes, these are few steps which are uh, used. So regarding this function, uh, generally different questions are asked uh, while doing the value engineering. So first we get the information. Uh, that means what is the requirement of a client or the project? Then what functions are performed? So we try to understand these requirements in the beginning. Then in the analysis phase, what we do, we try to do that. Is there any possibility of elimination of any process? Or what are the alternative methods for improving that function? So we do the analysis of that and we try to get the information of that. Then with respect to material, as we know that we use material for any product or project. So what are the material specifications uh, required by the client? And we can think as a value engineer that can there be any alternative material which can be used can the specification be amended many times what happens uh, generally we uh, do the project uh, as per the mind patterns developed over the years through our experience and we generally don't try the innovative methods so this method will trigger our uh, innovation within our mind and will help to uh, improve the value and save the cost so these are the phases actually so what quantity of material to be used so is there any size or weight of material excessive? Can we reduce the weight of the material? Can the cheaper material will serve the same purpose? So even though we use the cheaper material, can it will add the value also? So as far as the labor is concerned, we'll try to understand first what is the direct labor cost for some uh, one project decision. And we will analyze it that are all the labor activities are essential or not? Can we have alternative labor operation related issues. So this is a value engineering methodology and regarding the process, uh, are the best process are being used and can the these all operations uh, means we question them that all the operations are necessary or not. Can we modify those processes? So these are some creative questions we uh, put in the beginning in the planning phase and we try to find good solutions after that and can we standardize any product or material or any process so these are few questions which helps us to do the value engineering i will go ahead actually a little uh, standardized process we can say is been used at many places so this is one of the place that uh, there are four phases in the value engineering one is information phase second is creative phase 
third is evaluation phase then development phase and presentation phase so these are four phases gen, uh, four five phases generally used we'll go in detail with each phase in information phase so whenever uh, there is a requirement of a project to be done definitely we try to understand what is the project so we try to understand the problem statement what we need to do then in this phase actually we collect lot of data lot of information about the project background information client's requirement then we try to study and identify different problems with respect to these projects then uh, as i said background of the project we get the information from the client their exact requirement we get that then we get the budget and timeline of the project from the client so many times the different clients are having different budget and timeline requirements then quality requirements are also important so which are the key elements where the quality is very stringent what are the key elements where the quality can be compromised a little way and identify the cost mounting factors there are a lot of in the project there are many possibility that the cost may overrun at some points so we'll try to understand what are those so in the information all data and information is collected regarding the project next comes the creative phase this is a very important phase actually uh, in the planning so here all the team members within the organization let's say generally uh, there are different consultants uh, involved in the project so all these consultants together and their team members create different ideas as uh, those questions we have discussed before that is that required or not can we have a alternative material can we have alternative process for this project so these kind of ideas are jotted down first and uh, most importantly as it is a creative phase all team members are given freedom to express their ideas without judging their ideas in the first phase what happens if you uh, tell them that no this is good not good idea if you just that idea that no this is not good idea what happens they stop their uh, creation of those ideas in general in the this phase creation is important so just let them freely uh, express their ideas because many times the idea can come from even junior uh, engineer also even though the project is big senior people are there there is a possibility that a junior person will have a great idea then ideas with value improvement are encouraged in this phase so once the ideas are listed down then we try to find which are the value improvement ideas and next phase is the evaluation phase now this is the phase where those ideas are actually evaluated so ideas are arranged in order of importance and relevance and compatibility so as we have the list of set 10 ideas don't they are order uh, they are put in order of priority and value and the cost so the co the ideas which are having less cost they will be first the ideas which are having good value will be put first in this way so if the solutions for some ideas are hard to execute or practically not feasible they are generally discarded then the selected ideas let's say two three ideas we have selected then their alternative cost drivers are analyzed then the weighted evaluation is carried for say selected ideas say there are two three ideas we have selected out of 10 then we do the analysis like costing then timeline what is the timeline required for that project so what are the aesthetic uh, within these three ideas then what is the functional importance of those three ideas all these parameters are judged regarding that selected three ideas so this is the evaluation phase then next is the development phase so preliminary analysis now in the development phase we go more into the detailed analysis of that so preliminary analysis is done for that then uh, strength and weaknesses are uh, jotted down about all these ideas and preliminary analysis of final ideas selected actually so out of three the last idea has been now coming into picture now so all parameters which i discussed that detail analysis has been done for this two three options and after that the final idea is selected so out of three also we find that okay this one is the best idea which we can use for our project so that is the presentation phase last phase where we put the that selected final one great idea 
actually as i previously said it consists of different stakeholders like all consultants clients and vendors together in the planning phase which helps us to uh, for the clients to improve their uh, project value and reduce their cost then after that the final approval is taken by the client and the project gets started so these are the phases of value engineering in general so from this we can understand what is the benefit of uh, value engineering is to reduce the cost of the project or to save the time of the project so generally we know that these two points are very much important in the industry it may be industry industrial construction or it may be residential commercial construction or infra cost and time is very important so these two are key drivers for any project so in many times the in value engineering these two key drivers are uh, focused more and then after that let's say there may be some best design solution there may be good aesthetics as far as architects are concerned then to identify problems if there are any uh, unknown problems then to increase the durability of that project that is means life of value so we know that value yes. as we know that any project over the years requires maintenance let's say if you are having very less cost in the beginning of the project while for the construction of project let's say we uh, have a 1 crore uh, say initial cost and over the years for the maintenance it is taking 3 crores then it is not a good worth that even though we put more, less money in the beginning and uh, more money in the maintenance it is of no uh, it's not a good choice and finally the benefit is to increase the client satisfaction definitely if we uh, satisfy all these other parameters definitely the client will be satisfied at the end of the project we'll uh, study this actually and this will give you more idea about how the value engineering can be applied in a civil industry uh, at design and construction phase also so we'll go with this so there are actually two proposals after those creative ideas uh, we have jotted down two proposals uh, actually these two proposals are are already constructed actually so conventional proposal is there and value engineering proposal is there so actually the client has uh, was uh, expecting this project this project to be done so at first year he did this conventional proposal system and did the complete project and after that he appointed a value engineering consultant and total team uh, turnkey team where value engineering consultant has given the uh, value engineering proposals in the second year so actually first year the same project is done by the conventional way in the second year the same pro uh, similar project is done in a value engineering way so we can understand what is the difference and how can we get that difference so let's go with this uh, conventional proposal now as a civil engineer we know that in conventional how is the pro projects are done uh, as i discuss the project life cycle so these are the agencies or stakeholders which are generally involved in the project there may be uh, some additional as far as the different requirement of the projects are concerned but this is in general so there is a client involved in the project then architect structural consultants electrical mechanical consultants plumbing consultants now i am considering this project so there was a puff panel vendor also puff panel means insulated panels are there so ceiling safe ceiling and walls prepared by the insulated panel so, so i'll brief you regarding this project and then there are fabricators and contractors for the projects then there there is a crane operator as it is a steel structure crane operator and cranes are required and there is a plant head actually it is a industrial project so there is a requirement of plant head and their machinery uh, how they are operated so these are all the stakeholders which are involved in a, in this project so you can see we know that client appoints these all agencies together and he gets the uh, done the project from them so in conventional proposal what did the client has appointed architects first and then architect has prepared the functional layout and drawings then he structural consultant consulting team did the analysis design and all structural drawings of the project then bok is prepared and after the bok prepared it has been floated and the fabricator and contractor got selected at the end uh, on the basis of bok so as we know the bok contractor is the rate and the fabricator or contractor gets selected by the client who is giving the least cost less cost for the project and this puff panel suppliers are selected after that for this project so we will go with this to understand what is this project first 
So the project is so actually this is an electronics company type of industry we can say. and they uh, client wanted to do the clean room project so clean room this is a clean room we can say uh, the actually the walls and ceiling it is called as the puff panels there is a robotic operation inside happening it is a totally ac ac room we can say and it is dust free clean room means it is dust free so there are certain stringent criteria by the client that my room should be very clean because all robotic operations there should not be any dust inside the room so so it is called as a clean room now if you see as an engineer we are interested in to understand first what is the project so it is a clean room which requires thermal insulation inside then it should be dust free there should be enough lighting inside and one of the key parameter regarding this project was that the client wanted that the operation should not be stopped while doing the construction and fabrication so you can see these these machines were already inside the uh, this room now this clean room is inside a big structure actually there is a big shed within which there is a inside we did the shed and this clean room so the all the operation need a uh, client said that it we will not stop the operation you do the construction within that constraint because if they stop the these operations then their pro production will stop and their then productivity and then profit will stop so this was the key issue with the, with this project now we'll understand what is the technical uh, and functional uh, requirements actually so if we see this span is 12 meters then this clear height is 4 meters now you can see these are uh, say yellow color columns so the base spacing is 6 meters this is 6 meters structural uh, details with respect to this project so in the conventional what i had uh, happened the client has appointed a consultant uh, where he has proposed uh, some drawings in the beginning of the project so there were architect involved then structural consultant were involved and they had uh, given some structural details so if you see here this is the now you can see actually these are the trusses there are purlins and below this there is a puff panel ceiling so this structure is prepared to support th those false ceiling puff panels actually so we'll try to understand the structural details here so this is the we can say this is n type truss the span is 12 meters and it is made up of square tubes and rectangular tubes so these are hollow rectangular tubes then there are some purlins also you can see these are the purlins and below the purlins there is a tie member for the truss for the lateral stability so purlins and tie members are prepared by the rectangular tubes only then there is if you you can see the purlin connection that this is bolted here this purlins are bolted here you can see i'll show you some uh, 3d models also regarding that as as i go ahead so this is the brief for this conventional proposal these are few drawings prepared structural drawings this is n type truss and all details are given all sizes of uh, the members so this this is member vertical then drafters top cord bottom cord and there are purlins here at the top and there are type members at the bottom so and there is a splice joint i will discuss you this uh, now i'll just go through uh, we'll go through some 3d model i'll share you that now we can go towards each detail actually you can see this is a purlin yeah this is a purlin and purlins are prepared actually there are plates with these holes so these are the bolted connections here even at the bottom tie members are there where is the bolted connection now i discuss with you there is a splice connection so he, you can see here there is a splice actually what happens this span is 12 meters and we know that in general the in my market 6 uh, meter members are available uh, oh. for the tubes so you can see here there is a this 6 meter and this 6 meter pieces are joined together by the splice joint so this splice joint is there there is a plate inside the tube and after that these holes are prepared and there is a plug welding done for this splicing joint as we know that we cannot put any uh, splicing at the bottom at the maximum bending uh, region bend region so there is no splice here but yes at the one third portion we have done the splice here 
So there is one more splice and one more. So we can say for truss there are three splice joint. Then for the purlins, there are plates. These uh, for this truss there is a member cutter here. So and there is a plate. Then this is a purlin again. So this is the arrangement generally done. So what is the expectation in the uh, execution of this project? That this truss will be erected first, along with this horizontal member and this plate. Then this truss will be erected second. Then all these purlins are joined together by these bolts here. So once these two trusses are connected, uh, erected, these purlins are joined by the bolts. Then these tie members are joined by the bolts. This is the way of the construction actually uh, during the execution. You can see here the truss are joined here by the gusset plates uh, for, to the existing column. Now this is the existing column of the project, and there is a exist here newly erected column. Uh, splice joint which I uh, just discussed you on this model. Uh, so these are the joint details which are given in the structural drawing. And we'll see here how is the construction pro process, the fabrication process. The major part of this project is fabrication work and puff panel means false ceiling and uh, wall paneling work. And then a mechanical electrical work also there uh, partly. So you can see material handling at side. So these are the square tubes and rectangular tubes on the side. And the people are handling means they are they need to be prepare the truss for the project. So these all six meter members are to be taken and they need to be cut at different. So there is a drilling activity going on the site. These are few activities all together happening on the site. Uh, one of the key points from by the client was which was that the space requirement was very less actually for the work. So because if you see this is the wall behind that wall, there is a, there are operations going on because this our project was within the shade within the bigger shape. So they said that you will have only this place inside to work upon. So there were, was a space constraint also. You can see the truss has been uh, developed, uh, means created at part phase. So prepared by this cutting activities, then drilling activities all together, then marking and everything. So these are the people cutting machine, drilling, drilling machine, welding machine, all together. This is the truss prepared at site at on ground. So as I have said that the truss has to be prepared on ground, then erected at the location. These purlins and the time members erected. There was a big issue regarding this that many times what happens to match all those holes, bolt holes at site at certain height becomes very difficult actually. And it requires a lot of crane. You can see that crane is helping to erect these members. So what happens these tri members and purlins were difficult to erect and to match these bolt holes which are here in the plate so it took a lot of time actually for that purpose so while erecting crane time was more and even labor required were more because they need to stand for more time while erection then there were some errors many times what happens on site due to heavy activities there is a possibility that these members will bend a little and there is a then issue for matching the, those those bolt holes so this is one of the picture then what happened actually to take care of this actually then as a fabricator uh, fabricator felt that this method is eating a lot of time and the client was having very stringent time so what happened then the fabricator contractor has raised some issue regarding this then it has been uh, given asked to the consultant and then they have tried uh, we have asked them that can uh, we do the truss and the purlin erection on the ground itself and we will assemble uh, assembly we will erect on the site so if you go here now in the second phase what we did actually to reduce the time the two trusses were taken together and all purlins are, are welded and uh, bolted on ground itself and these two assembly along with the purlins has been now uh, lifted by the crane and erected at the site so it saved the time because putting these purlins at height by the labors and crane it's more time than this because on ground the activities are easy because people can move very safely and easy so we can say that this is the value engineering done at the construction phase or fabrication phase but definitely 
it is at later stage uh, all trusses and purlins together on site now this is a first conventional proposal now in the next year after one or one and half years client required the same kind of requirement now in this time he has appointed value engineering consultant and turnkey project he has given actually so in that value engineering process working structure same structure was there actually as previously the client is there architect structural consultant and all other consultant fabricators contractors crane operator everybody was, were there the only one point is that value engineering coordinator is there in between them so the, his role is that he is coordinating with each agency here even including client all architects and he helps to optimize the cost and to optimize the time required for the project he tries to understand uh, the requirement at different levels then he proposes and helps these agencies to create the different ideas in the creative phase and the best idea is selected uh, among these all stakeholders including client and final idea is selected so he is the main coordinator who is doing this kind of things so we will see what was the next project here so this is the how the things were done actually client appointed architect structural consultant and value engineering coordinator together and all these agencies now what happened value engineering consultant followed the value engineering methodology i discussed before in the project at the planning phase itself so in the planning phase contractor is also involved that perf panel agency is also involved architect definitely is involved then mechanical electrical people are also involved so all the inputs now even the material supplier is also in production what happens during this phase we need to get the material rates also so whatever suggestion or decision we take we have to take the material rates from the suppliers then their lead time lead time means how much time they if i put a order to the material supplier then how much time will it take to reach the material on site so there are some materials which takes more time actually in the construction so the uh, materials which takes more time uh, more lead time definitely client will not be happy to take those materials so this kind of elimination is also done uh, regarding this material suppliers then puff panel agency is also involved in the preliminary planning phase also so we will, i will discuss this uh, during next uh, slides so what is the importance of all this actually so as we have already seen that value engineering is effective at the planning phase only very effective so these all people got involved in the planning phase only so this is the value engineering proposal where the all c2 options are selected based on different parameters then after selecting the final idea all working drawings got prepared uh, after the coordination with all agencies then final boq is prepared and then contractor got selected uh, depending on that final boq and puff panel supplier prepared all the material as per the drawings parallelly with the fabrication work so i'll show you the photos and then you will understand what i mean to say so for this value engineering proposal we will see what is the structural proposal now this is the value engineering proposal for this uh, selected after all ideas this is the final idea got selected you can see this is a rolled section ismb 400 so the instead of truss ismb 400 has been selected here then there are purlins ismc 150 purlins are there now this depth is very less so so there was no need of any actually time members at below for stability actually so only purlins are there at the top then you can see the end connections are welded connection here to the column now these are the drawings is ismb 400 all purlins then cleats everything and this end connection is welded connection it is the puff panel below that structure that puff panel fault right there are some suspenders going on from this purlin to this puff panel which are getting supported so puff panel is supported by these hangers the green color hangers which are coming from the purlins now all these drawings got prepared in the planning phase only so all that puff panel agency was involved in the planning and they have been taught that our purlin is coming at this point so puff panel agency has member inside this a tube member which is required so at the execution phase exactly this puff panel got erected at the right location so this hanger got fitted at right location here 
what happened in the previous uh, conventional uh, phase that puff panel agency got selected at the end of the project uh, after fabrication got started and at that time what happened these purlins were not exactly below this tube so there were some additional members required to be supported to the puff panel because this support was here somewhere and there there is no member here so there was additional member has been added here which added the cost and time to the project so these are some issues which were happened in the conventional proposal due to non involvement of that puff panel agency at the planning phase now this is a puff panel supporting planning so in the planning phase only all structural drawings and puff panels are superimposed together to understand these supporting points so these are the supporting points these this line indicates the purlin line all purlin line set so exactly purlin is coming below above this point actually supporting points so these drawings prepared in the planning phase only you can see now there is no preparation of any truss any cutting of members any welding of members just bring this member now there is one speciality in the value engineering suggestion we can say that this member is 12 meter long now generally all members structural members are available in 6 meter length but what happened in the value engineering during the creative phase we have asked the material supplier that can you give 12 meter member so he said yes we can give the 12 meter member but at a little more cost it will cost more transportation and a little uh, material cost we said okay you can give because what happened this 12 meter whole section has saved my truss preparation activity it saved my splicing or everything anything there is no splice there is no any joint like truss nothing just bring the member by the crane and erect on the side on the column this is the speciality so there are different decisions were taken this is the end connection welded connection of this member with the cleat and side cleats and uh, top bottom cleats directly erected no fabrication work at all for this main beams are erected that is the girder so ready made purlins got erected actually this roll section ismc 150 is available in the market ready made and this fan is also luckily 6 meters so just put the mem member on it and weld it with the cleats so purlin erection is also easy and there is only one purlin now you can see in the uh, conventional proposal there was a plates here plates with bolts then plates with bolts shoulders are erected now for uh, painting is done at the actually once the so what happened actually uh, painting is done after the erection is done here so there are two possibilities on site that painting can be done uh, on ground also red oxide and then painting so but on ground what is happening painting takes three time days site actually so first red oxide layer then second day first layer of paint then third day third layer of paint and then fourth day erection so it was adding time actually to the project. so what we decided to, uh, to paint it was erection is done so it is an independent and parallel activity so the painting in progress so this is the completing phase you can see here this is all their operations are still going on so we have created some temporary uh, barrication here which will not hamper their uh, products and machinery actually if something falls down so this is the final fabrication work done by the value engineering solution you can see it is very slick very easy very simple for erection now you can see this is the puff panel ceiling you will see there are hooks and there is one suspender or hanger which is exactly going at the below and there are tubes inside this puff panel so there were only two series of puff panel supports hangers in the previous projects which is which was conventional due to errors of these points there were additional members here at many places and it was very difficult it added i think around 400 to 450 kg of steel additional steel just to put these hangers on the supports you can see it is very clean and exactly drawn in the beginning now this is the finished clean room their production is still working uh, even though project is finished and while project was going on also now we'll compare actually uh, i just compared it before also we took these parameters for comparison so let's say what is the parametric analysis for these two proposals weight was more in this overall it is less in this proposal 
So this is the second parameter. Third parameter, which is very important, that is the material cost. Yeah, and then with respect to the labor cost, as I have said, there were a lot of activities. By using the crane and by using the labors, many times it becomes very difficult actually to match the holes. So the quality achieved may be little less. Actually, it is a subjective parameter. So you can see this is very durable. Salvage value. Now in the comparison, we will see all this comparison together. 